Hey everyone, this is Corinne Lafont, your favorite radio host, your only radio host and favorite girl, of course, broadcasting to you from the lovely island of Trinidad and Tobago in the Caribbean on Between the Lines. And you know how we do it here on Between the Lines. We are always grateful or thankful. I like to use thankful. That's my word, thankfulness. So I am thankful to be here. I'm thankful to be above ground. I'm thankful to have a beautiful young woman next to me with long flowing hair. She's just looking like a little Barbie doll. I'm telling you. So, <laughs> so, so it's great to have her here. Her name is Katia. I hope I have it right. R.V. Yes. Reed. Is it Katia or Katia? Tell me. Yes. Katia. Katia. Yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. yes. Katia. Yes. So I normally get it right. I normally get it right. See, I'm good. I'm good. So we have Katia Reed with us, and she is an author. Can you believe it? So if she can do it, you can too. And the topic of our conversation today is the title of her book, The Foretold Story. And I do believe it is a series which she's going to share a bit more with us in our discussion. And I'm going to be showcasing her website a little bit lower down, as you know I normally do in the episode. Yeah? You're supposed to be used to this by now, people. You're watching, you're listening, you know the kind of format we have on Between the Lines. I don't need to tell you, okay? So, welcome, Katya, to Between the Lines. And before I I, I do anything else, I, I kind of tripped off there and forgot to introduce you properly by sharing a bit about you. She is a highly creative multi-artist with a diverse ability and background in the arts. Her first novel, The Four Tools Story Book One, Part One, is a trilogy, with book one cut into two parts which was just released April of 2020. So that was recent, almost about a year ago, because we are in March now, we finished March, so it's almost a year. It took Reed 19 years to write the story, which came to her at the age of nine, wow. What were you doing at the age of nine, people? Clearly not thinking about <laughs> writing a book. The, <laughs> the years following, she grew as well as the development of her characters, having also come from tragic beginnings, with many lows in life, Reed always learned, leaned on her spiritual beliefs as well as her art to carry her through. Her art helped her in her healing. Wow, I can relate to that. While she was building this book series inspired by life's unusual encounters, dreams and characters she met along the way, she was also creating an array of art in all art forms. And with that, developed the continuing story titled Gordon's Quest into a full-length feature film script one of four cinema package of movies with a vision board concept website featuring her artistry and talent. Whoa, all of this is going through her mind at nine years? Oh my word, I don't know. We need to find out what kind of mind she has, people. Welcome Katya to Between the Lines. What is Hi. a nine-year-old? <laughs> what is a nine-year-old? You listen to me. You're supposed to be playing with your dolls out in the park, riding your bike, watching a little TV, you know, coloring books, you know, that type of thing. What, 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 what's it I with you, Katia, at nine? What's it with you? Well, I, I, <laughs> I just had this incredible, um, this incredible dream that came to me, and I decided to begin creating it and birthing it um, by whatever means necessary, using all of my um, artistic ability to develop it throughout the long uh, years and process of, of doing all of this. <laughs> I, I, I can tell, I can tell. Whatever means necessary that you're talking feature film script, uh, uh, Gordon's quest, who the hell is Gordon? Huh? Who the hell is Gordon? I, I, we need to know. <laughs> we need to know who is Gordon here. Who is Gordon? <laughs> well, I don't understand you. You're a young girl. Okay. You're a young girl. You still look like nine. Who the hell is Gordon? She's <laughs> <laughs> uh, the, the main character of the largest story of, of my book series. So, um, <laughs> My book series is called. Yes, the yes, Fortune that's a story. story you're sticking as with. you know, Katia, and, uh, Gordon's Katia, that's a story series. you're sticking with. That that that's a character yeah. in your book. That that's a character in your book. You really expect us to believe that, Katya? Okay, all right. If that's what you say, we're going with that. 
But we know better. We know there is somebody real behind that, people. We know. But that's okay. <laughs> we know better. We know better, Katya. It's okay. But we'll pretend. We'll pretend to be fooled today. Okay? We'll pretend to be fooled. But that's all right. Fooled? <laughs> I'm not fooled. <laughs> <laughs> all right okay that's the story you're sticking with okay okay so so, <laughs> so a young girl like yourself you're an author there are lots of people older than you even your age right because you're nine you got these ideas rolling around in your head and you decided whatever means necessary you need to give birth to these ideas the first thing i want to ask is you said give birth to these ideas. A lot of people, ideas come in their mind, including myself. I mean, we're all human and we don't follow through on them. What is it that made you decide? Because you said whatever means necessary. What is that why? What is that reason, that compelling reason that made you decide you have to do this and follow through on it? Well, I, I think it has to do with God really. Um, he just kind of gave me this idea and these dreams and visions and then along with life's unusual encounters to to tell a, a great and amazing story about a battle between good and evil that goes on every day in our lives but people just don't realize it it's uh it's truly it's truly it's truly what makes the world the way it is. And I feel like that's my purpose in life is to is to share the story that was given to me. So uh, here I am and and that's what my, my <laughs> nine year old self was was doing. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's, it's important to realize your why. And your why is your relationship with God. And you know, you know, I mean, anybody who understands God, you can run, but you can't hide. He is going <laughs> to come after you. He's going to find you. Okay? He's going to put that idea into your head again and again and again. He's going to show you things, you know, through people, on TV, radio, a song. <laughs> An image, a <laughs> yeah. meme. He's going. <laughs> okay, he is going to. He will yeah. form the clouds and make you, you know, trigger a thought. He. Oh, listen. Why am I saying this? Because I know, I know how he operates. He's sneaky. He's sneaky. He finds ways of making sure you follow through on what you have to do. What he puts in that head of yours, yeah, in that spirit. So, so you started to write the book. Tell me you know, what it, what it takes for you as an author, now that you're, you're established as an author, you've published a book, you're just showing it to us a while ago. So you have a beautiful design, you have something that you can hold and feel proud about, and it's a series. Yeah. How does it feel as a young person? How does it feel as a young person giving birth to a book and knowing that you have a feature film, a film coming, you have written a, a, a script for a film, how, I mean, tell us what, what is running through your mind. What are your parents saying? What are your friends saying about you? Tell us about the, the journey. <laughs> well, uh, a lot. some people find it hard to believe that there's someone like me that can, that can, that can do all of this, um, that can create art and, and write and draw and, and create. Um, and it wasn't an easy journey. It was really hard. It was rather bittersweet because there were moments of uh, discouragement and, and great opposition where it's just like hell itself will come against you. And, and it feels like the world's against you at times. And, and yet I persevered through my trials in creating this story. And, and I'm here today and people find that quite remarkable and, and inspiring in their own dreams and what, and what they're trying to do. So um, 
it, it's been a it's the journey is just like the genres of this book it is it has its its horrifying moments it's it's beautiful and mysterious magical moments it's got its romantic moments and its sorrowful moments and its laugh out loud moments just as life does so um holding this book in my hands uh it's truly profoundly deep and uh and so wonderful and um, i'm glad yeah. to be able to to share it and to share myself with everybody that's right oh yes you said something significant there to share yourself because you can't hide behind the book as much as people may use um pseudonym <laughs> which is another name they might not want to use their real name an alias or pseudonym you can't hide eventually people are going to know you are the author or whoever you know if somebody else using an, an alias that they are behind the book but you said something a while ago which is interesting you said you came upon resistance opposition discouragement and you also said somebody like you you know people are, are looking at you and saying somebody like you i i don't understand that what does this somebody like you mean i'm like what, what does that mean do what is the somebody that's supposed to alter a book? What is the shape, size, color? I, I don't know. What What are they supposed to look like? Is there a, a particular person that's supposed to be doing this? What do you mean somebody like you? <laughs> Why not you? I mean, when I say that, somebody who stays true to themselves doesn't compromise for anything, um, stays humble and forgiving even when wrong and and still be able to hold a smile yes somebody like me and i know there's more people out there like me a lot of people out there like me they just they just um they just need a leg up <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah yeah how long did it take you to complete the book? And what was the journey like? Did you write consistently every day? Tell us, share with us. Um, the journey was, well, uh, I would draw and, and write these characters. And I began building their world that they would live in every day of my life. I would be creating something. And uh, I would design and name the places, draw the world maps, uh, explore the technologies that are found in the book. And uh, I'd learn about each of these characters deeply. And along the way, I, I met some wonderful people who have uh, thought out the best in me and, and what I have to offer that taught me lessons that helped me to develop and, and, and give me the tools and awaken hidden gifts along the way. Everything I would need to, to accomplish this, this book. And uh, it, was, it wasn't easy. And like I said, life was hard and it still is at times. Um, and I would, uh, I would write essentially much of my own experiences into my work into these characters that I would make and the story I would write. Um, and and here it is. And that's like, that's been my journey. Again, it's just a bittersweet journey. There was a lot of uh, people telling me what I cannot do constantly. Or I was outcasted, told how weird I was, called all kinds of, of names. And so I, I spent a lot of time at times alone, um, just me, uh, my art and God, if you will. And so I would just, uh, I write and create <laughs> until it's finished. And lo and behold, here it is, the first of, of something wonderful so, and, and the beginning of something great to that's come. A, that, that's <laughs> right. That's a, that's a thick book. What, how many pages is that book? I'm looking at it. It's the size of the book. How many pages I, is it? <laughs> 
This first book is 418 pages. Um, it would have been much longer if I hadn't I cut it in half. So it's cut into two parts because it was, this would have been like a, a really thick first oh book. Oh my god! <laughs> how long? How long did it take you to complete the book? How long did it take you? 418 pages. How long did it take you? Well, um. 19 years total for the overall arc, which includes the larger story, Gordon's Quest, along with everything that comes with that. Um, and this book was tied right into it. So essentially 19 years to, uh, to bring it down to, uh, to this, what we see here. <laughs> <There's> <laughs> <laughs> no, no. <laughs> right now, here, here's the thing. I'm I'm looking at you. How old are you now? I am 32. What's your age now? Um, 32. No, no, no. You see, there you go again. You're making up stuff. You mustn't say that. No, no, no you're not 32. You're much, much younger. You were looking nine. I would give you 16. Okay, so that's what we're working with. So you have friends. You have your friends in your circle, people who are your friends, relatives, and so on. And you are there writing 400 plus pages of a book, committed, dedicated, resilient. What are your other friends doing? What are other people in your life doing compared to what you are doing? Well, um, they, uh, they, some of them have families and um, they work uh, in their giving careers of whatever their dream is. They go out a lot and, and do lots of things. Um, some of them have a ton of friends because they're just really awesome. <laughs> Glad to be their friends too. <laughs> their <laughs> friends too. Um, and uh, I don't know. Like they, they're just living their life, and it's wonderful. It truly is. <laughs> yeah, because I'm saying, I wonder what they would be thinking. What are some of the feedback that they have given you when they realize that you have spent this time working on your book, publishing something, and you're an author? You know, that can be a bit intimidating for some people. They'll be like, ooh, she's an author now. She can't hang with us. Ooh, you know, she's a lady <laughs> of words, and, and she's having a seat. Series. And oh, she's writing a script for a film. Next thing you know, she moves up to Hollywood and she doesn't know us anymore. You, you know, you get that kind of that kind of feedback. Have you been getting that? Um. Well, uh, I mean, some people part. I mean, they're in my life for a season, and then they their path is a different path, and they kind of just drift away, which is okay. And then. And other ones are just here to stay and they just like what I do and they cheer me on and they keep cheering me on even now, <laughs> despite all uh, the ups and downs <laughs> that come with this path that I am on. Yeah. Uh, I'm grateful for that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So what, tell us a bit, you know, in a nutshell, if you were to pitch your book, to screenwriters to turn it into a film or for persons to purchase your book. This is your opportunity to pitch your book. What would you say your book is about, The Foretold Story? Um, the Foretold Story follows a young man named, a young man named Midas Aurelian who has experienced so much challenges and he's plagued by these life-altering tragedies that crush his desire to exist. And he has dreams to work for the renowned skyscraper empire located in the heart of New York City. Um, but however, all these um, Midas finds himself encountering these deep, dark twists and turns along with mysterious happenings as he's pursuing his dreams to work for the skyscraper empire, landing him among the principal principalities of the world to uh, the highest realms of, of danger and and uh danger and, and magic and uh very relevant to the day and age we are living in today as there are a lot of Midases in the world where 
there's just so much bad stuff that just keeps happening to you and you can't explain it. But then there's this, this great epic battle between good versus evil. And you got like the celestial war horse midnight. And you got Denny, this beautiful, majestic, this majestic being that stands and guards the gates of time. And then you've got people like Joy Skyscraper, who is the heiress to the Skyscraper Empire. And, and she's caught up in all of this stuff too. And then you got small people who don't even have a clue that they're part of this, like Mr. Reed, who's just doing his job as a teacher and he's just caught in this crazy, crazy, craziness. And it just flies and soars into something incredibly multi-genre epicness that has never, the world has never seen before. It's something brand new. <laughs> <laughs> lovely, lovely. It sounds like a lot. <laughs> <laughs> it sounds like a lot going on. Who who is your favorite character in the story and why? Oh, that is always so hard. Everybody always asks that. And every time it's always a different one. So I know. Crazy. Um I would say <laughs> my favorite character for today because i love them all but if i had to pick one just for like right now i would pick i would pick that's a good question i don't know who i picked because they're all so cool um you know what I think, <laughs> I think today i will pick i don't know which one to pick because i love them all <laughs> Okay, I you know, know I know, but pick one. If you were to stay on the planet or wherever that, that you have the story depicted in and you had to choose one to stay with, who would you choose? One to stay with, who would I choose? I would choose, I choose Midnight. I choose Midnight today. Midnight. <laughs> yeah. All right, we wouldn't, tell, we wouldn't tell the rest of the characters that you said that. So we for them to get jealous. <laughs> but we're, we're on your website here now. Are you seeing that? We're on your yes, website. Yes, I am. Mm -hmm. Right. So persons can see. Well, clearly, I don't know if I could. If why you chose midnight is because it looks like it's midnight. I don't know. And it's available oh. now, and you have it in ebook, soft cover, soft cover, and hard cover. Uh -huh. On Amazon, Barnes and Noble, and more. Yes. And you said, Welcome to the official website of the series. Lots more to come. So you're preparing people. All right. Yeah. They can add their email address to stay up to date with you. And mm -hmm. they will know when the other books are coming out. What about this movie or, or script you're working on or have been working on? Tell us about that. That would be Gordon's Quest, which is the it's the largest story to this series, um, which would be a uh, Gordon's Quest dot net, um, and that one uh, pretty much sums up with with everything what this book is. Um, the concept website for Gordon's Quest does not reflect the final vision or finished product that is packaged in the feature length uh, movie script. Um, but it's more of so to get an idea of what we have to look forward to. Um, but yeah, that's a. It, it's epic. lovely. I'm seeing midnight. <laughs> I am seeing midnight yeah, here. Midnight. The mighty war horse always prepared for. Oh my God! I I guess I would choose midnight as yeah. well. Midnight is Let so me see. epic. Okay. It comes, it's so cool. Yes. <laughs> yes. I would choose a horse any day. I love horses. I grew up not, I mean, I, I just have this affinity for horses. I find they're so strong, powerful. They're just all muscle. They just look, I don't know. They just, they just, I don't know. They just look so free. I love that they, they, they're so free when they're running, you know? Um, my favorite yeah. story growing up was Black Beauty. Black Beauty, I got the storybook. I watched the, the movie many, many, many years ago, you know, and I see, I think I see that they're bringing out a updated version, which I need, if it hasn't come out yet, but I need to check on that because Black Beauty always has a soft spot in my heart, you know, and anytime I'm around horses or, you know, um, 
I just feel a connection with them, you know? Mm. So I, I love that, Midnight. And, and Midnight is jet black, so I guess that he would be, he would be black, which is Black Beauty, yeah? Black Beauty was yeah, jet black, he's just shiny. He's amazing and powerful. And man, does Midnight make an awesome engine. <laughs> Yeah. But he comes a little. That later is that is later. awesome. <laughs> yeah. I see you have some reviews here. It's taking a yes, little time to come up. Yes. I do. <laughs> you have some reviews. Yeah. So one of the things we always encourage persons to do is check out the reviews, and you're on Goodreads, which is good. Mm -hmm. Let's see. Do you have you been giving away a chapter of your? Of your book as well. I'm I'm going to read it now. Have you given away um, a chapter of your book so that persons can have a taste or what? Oh yeah, they how have, have you like, been promoting? Um, um Barnes mm -hmm. and Noble, they have oh, Barnes and Noble, and I think Amazon too has like the first couple of chapters available. Um, the character yes. Uh, yes. starts out fairly young, um, but it goes you know, the story grows with him into his adult life. Uh, so, uh, yeah, yes. there, there are samples up there. I also, um, let's see. Yeah, there's samples on there, I think. Yeah, there is. <laughs> you, and that's you holding the book. <laughs> yes. That's Just you like right holding now. the book. I saw a video here a while ago. Yes, I want to play this video here. Let's see what's happening in this video. done the who did your illustrations for you because they, they, they look really cool I did them what I did listen them I am going to put you out of my show I'm going to no no that's too much I'm, I did I'm going to put you out I'm going to put you out like, <laughs> this character right here um, that is so cool he's part of the, he's that, part of the series that too, is so cool Yeah. That is awesome. So you, you're able to do all your creative work yourself because you see what they look like in your mind. You know them intimately. So it, it you know, for you to give them over to somebody else to, to explain or to or to create them for you, it would be it would be like impossible. It's too much going back and forth. You know exactly who they are what they're supposed to look like the colors the everything isn't that awesome you're on all in yeah. one package Katya Reed. Mm. part of the reason why i, that I is ended nice. up doing it, i did it like this because um you know i got a lot of closed doors you know people saying no 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 to me all the time so i had to just do everything myself <laughs> including my art and animation and everything that goes with that along with this book and <laughs> yeah. I've had a little help along the way well, and encouragement is... and but yeah. <laughs> I had to just do well, it. Well that is awesome. <laughs> the fact that you're yeah the fact that you're talented and make sure that you continue building that talent. Keep writing, keep listening to the voice, the inspiration from above to keep pushing because I am sure that the books that you're writing is is a is a how shall I say is a vision that you're being given. We don't know. Look, we are here in a pandemic. Nobody expected something like this. We're coping, <laughs> you know, dealing. We don't know what is to come. 
We don't know what is to come. We really don't know. So we don't know the, the story in your book might end up being something extremely real, you know, of, of coming to pass that we have to be able to live. So I wish you all the best, Katia. Is there any final words you want to say to the listening audience before we go? Uh, yes. I will say this, as they always say, um, something my fourth grade teacher told me. Um, no matter how unfair things can be in life at times, um, no matter how hard you want to give up, you can't give up. You have to make your mark. You have to make your mark because it's going to help somebody out there. So make your mark. Do whatever it is that's in your heart to do and, and may it shine very bright. So don't give up. <laughs> I love that. I love that. And I've been seeing that message coming to me in all different shapes and forms. And I know that is a message for me. And it is a message for others who will be listening to this. Don't give up. That is a message mm -hmm. for me. I accept it. I take it with love. And I'm definitely not going to give up. Thank you so much, Katia Reed, for being on Between the Lines. Thank you for having me.